Today, we're going to be covering what a terribly lazy cancellation attempt looks like. In particular, Carrie Howley's article written for New York Magazine, an attempt to cancel Dr. Andrew Huberman. Welcome to another episode of Catching You Up With... The Nadal, it's so good. I'd like to thank the executive producer of today's episode, Wolfski Comedy. Without the big baller support of Wolfski Comedy, I'd probably be an international man running all sorts of call centers, most likely in India, Portugal, Brazil, places like this, things like that. And to get my workforce of call centers to call and pray on as many elderly folk as possible, where, you know, they're alleging to be representatives of Microsoft or the IRS, and that, you know, we need a large amount of Cheesecake Factory gift cards uh, in order to not call the police on these elderly folk you know, within the next 20 to 30 minutes. And sure, a lot of them they'll miss, but a lot of them they won't. And we'll be getting those Cheesecake Factory gift cards, or at least I would in another life. But because Wolfski Comedy is showing big baller support, I don't have to do that stuff. And if you want to show big baller support for this show, you can go ahead and click the Patreon link in the description below. Now is a good time to comment, like, and subscribe to this video and or YouTube channel. Someone getting canceled usually starts with someone tweeting an old video of someone saying a no-no word, or it'll be an article revealing anecdotal evidence, but all of it is just an attempt to assassinate someone's character. David Portnoy is probably one of the best to combat this type of aggressive behavior, and although it's entertaining as hell to watch him do it, we will not be covering him in today's episode. So let's go over one of the laziest hit pieces I think I've ever read. Carrie Howley wrote an article for New York Magazine that was released March 25th of 2024. And it was all about the interpersonal dating life of Dr. Andrew Huberman. And the article reads a lot like what you would hear your girlfriend report back to you after coming back from a very boozy brunch with her girlfriends. A lot of information about other people, that doesn't concern you or interest you. This is probably cool for someone, but this is a shitty read because this information sucks. This article exists behind a paywall, which blows, but for the sake of my journalistic integrity, I went and splurged on the one week free trial in order to read this article. I have an OnlyFans account for the same exact reason research. And look, I'm only going to be discussing parts of this article that show just weird projections and biases and none of the actual accusations that they use to try and besmirch Dr. Huberman. Now listen to this dumb shit. So this is just talking about his main girlfriend's side friend's uh, opinions on Dr. Huberman. The relationship struck Sarah's friend as odd. At one point, Sarah said, I just want to be with my kids and cook for my man. I was like, who says that, says a close friend. I mean, I've known her for 30 years. She's a powerful, decisive, strong woman. We grew up in this very feminist community. That's not a thing either of us would ever say. Another friend found him stressful to be around. <laughs> I try to be open-minded. I don't want to be the most negative, non-supportive friend just because of my personal observations and disgust over somebody. When they were together, he was buzzing, anxious. He's like, oh, my dog needs his blanket this way. And I'm like, your dog is just laying there and super cozy. Why are you being weird about the blanket? Sarah was not the only person who experienced the extent of Andrew's anger. Being weird about your dog's blanket is an expression of anger? Boy, these people have comfortable lives. Like real comfortable. This one time, Andrew was not cool about his dog's blanket, which was the biggest sign of aggression I've ever experienced in my life. Disgusting! Who the fuck are these people? How is this worth reporting on? Back when we were friends with Sarah 30 years ago, she hated men. What did he do to her? He's so angry. <laughs> people change. People evolve. Like every day, right? Like, look at me. Back when I was young, wasn't a big fan of pickles. Fast forward 30 years, I eat a pickle from time to time. Look at us adulting together, right? No, but when we were growing up, we lived in an anti-pickle society, and you always hated pickles. And now that you like pickles, who's hurting you? Who's brainwashing you? <laughs> uh, 
And yeah, look, that's probably a straw man argument, but <laughs> it's it's so ridiculous to read that in like an opening couple paragraphs of a hit piece on someone. This article is so petty, it even knocks Huberman for doing podcast ad reads. Let's take a quick break and talk about the sponsor of this episode, Ridge Wallet. Tired of carrying around that dad wallet you've had for the last 10 years? Upgrade to Ridge Wallet. It's slim and it goes in your front pocket. It has room for 12 cards, plus space for cash. With over 50 colors and styles, there's an option for everybody. They even have optional AirTag attachments, so you'll never lose your wallet again. Personally, I just upgraded to their Damascus Steel uh, keychain and wallet combo. And now I also don't have a wallet that I have to keep in my back pocket that messes up the alignment of my spine and gives me all sorts of back problems. This is now enough to like go in my front pocket and look how easy it is to just take shit out. Look at that. Ridge wallets are seriously durable, but if you do manage to damage yours, they come with a lifetime warranty. They even have an awesome return policy. They'll let you try it out for 99 days. If you don't love it, just send it back for a full refund. Go to ridge.com slash nadav. That's N-A-D-A-V. And use my code nadav, N-A-D-A-V, for 10% off your order. That's ridge.com slash nadav. And use code nadav for 10% off your entire order. Thanks so much to Ridge for sponsoring this show and creating the best wallet ever. Now, let's go back to the show. Listen to this shit. On every episode of his zero cost... Wait, hold on, let me change my voice. On every episode of his zero cost podcast, Huberman gives a lengthy endorsement of a powder formerly known as Athletic Greens and now as AG1. It is one thing to hear Athletic Greens promoted by Joe Rogan. It is perhaps another to hear someone who sells himself as a Stanford University scientist just back from the lab proclaim that his $79 a month powder covers all your foundational nutritional needs. Jesus, Gary, come on. Here, we have a powder that contains, according to its own marketing, 75 active ingredients, far more than the typical supplement, which would seem a selling point, but for more inconveniences of mass. As performance nutritionist Adam McDonald points out, the vast number of ingredients indicates that each ingredient, which may or may not promote good health in a certain dose, is likely included in minuscule amounts. Though consumers are left to do the math themselves, the company keeps many of the numbers proprietary. We can be almost guaranteed that literally every supplement or ingredient within this proprietary blend is underdosed, explains McDonald. McDonald sounds like an absolute nerd. And not only that, but making claims from unfounded assumptions. We can be almost guaranteed that literally every we can be almost guaranteed. I can almost guarantee that you are absolutely talking out of your ass. I can almost guarantee it. You know what else the author of this article, Carrie Howley, reports on as like a, a character witness to Huberman? She quotes the YouTube comment section, known as probably one of the dumbest places on the internet She's quoting that. Listen to this shit. At a time when life had shifted to screens, he brought people back to their corp corporeal selves. Oh, that's a big word. He advised a physiological sigh, two short breaths in and a long one out to reduce stress. He pulled countless people from their laptops and put them in rhythm with the sun. Thank you for all you do to better humanity read comments on YouTube. You may have just saved my life, man. If Andrew was a science teacher for everyone in the world, no one would have missed even a single class. Wow, Carrie's really pulling from the top minds of the internet to really establish <laughs> Andrew's superior baseline. <laughs> from the YouTube section, she's quoting that. You want me to quote you something from my YouTube comment section? Bring back the ring lights, you beta Jew cuck. That's the type of people that are in these comment sections. Now, granted, I love all of it. Comment, like, subscribe, all that shit, right? But you're not pulling or extracting legitimate opinions, granular things as like a, look at how much this person is loved. Fuck off. Fuck off, Gary. <laughs> then uh, there was a part of the article where Carrie decides to stray away from Andrew's personal relationships for a while and then focuses on a professional relationship 
where some journalist was trying to like go on a weekend long hiking expedition with Dr. Huberman. And this guy was upset that like a super busy neuroscientist doesn't have time to spend like a straight 72 hours hiking shit with them. Her story included a few quotes from me about some of the disturbing behavior that I'd seen from him back in the days before he shot into internet fame. Because if I were gonna put on the hat of a psychologist instead of a journalist, I would say that in my experience, there's nothing that Huberman enjoys more than manipulating people. He invited me out to Oakland to hang out with him with the plan that we would head out on a two or three day camping trip into the woods. I think it was Sequoia National Park, but it might've been Yosemite, I sort of forget. I was excited, not because he was famous or any of that, just because I wanted an interesting friend. So I packed a bag, I booked a ticket from Denver, and I rented a car. But when I showed up at his house, dude wasn't there. I mean, he said that he had some work to do, there were some text messages, and there was a grant deadline, I guess. And he basically ghosted me for like roughly 18 hours. I stayed at his house alone for the entire day with his dog, Costello, who was on the couch, not moving very much, watching the time that we had put aside for camping slip by. Aww. You're mad he didn't get 72 straight hours of Dr. Huberman's time? Mm-hmm. Aw. Mm -hmm. He couldn't make time for you? Somebody call the New York Times about this. Oh, the New York Times isn't interested? Someone call Carrie over at New York Magazine. She needs to know I'm slighted as fuck. <laughs> and this guy's name is Scott Carney. Someone who seems honestly very easily slighted. Well, clearly, uh, this person is trying to uh, holocaust this author. <laughs> like, what the fuck are we doing? The author then goes on to express how deeply hurt he was. I wrote this chapter about him in The Wedge. We were talking about virtual sharks and some neurology, and I gave him a draft to review. And this is not something that journalists always do. Maybe that would be cool, and no one was paying attention to him at that time anyway, so maybe it would give him like a little boost. But again, he ghosted me. Yeah. He's a busy dude. And then when Scott Carney got fed up that he wasn't getting a response, he's like, well, my publisher. Meanwhile, my deadline was about to get blown past. My editor was like on my case. I told him like, look, this is just not cool. I've given you enough time to review. I'm just gonna run with it anyway. And I'm just gonna assume that your silence on this is just that I got everything right. And then he called me immediately. And Andrew was mad. Guess what? Scott Carney felt extremely slighted again. Some people don't even have time to read Quentin Tarantino's book when he comes on to a podcast to talk about the book and promote it mainly. You said you've been reading it for a little bit. All right. Uh, where, where are you up to now? Um, I don't know. You uh, are talking about going to... You've started oh, the to go to opening the chapter. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't read it. I told you that. I know. Boy, you were still listening to I it. I was listening okay, to okay. it. Yeah, so you've yeah. listened to the open... Yeah. Half of the opening hey, chapter. <laughs> I, I, I got now, now it. Where, where, where in the opening chapter did you did, did you arrive at? Did you? Okay. Hey, I, I'll when answer. you listen to it today for the first time, not as today. you drove from your house no, to the to, to today. the studio today, not today. When you pulled up today, I where was to it? I swear to God, not today. <laughs> and you're not Quentin Tarantino, bro. You're not. You're fucking Scott Carney. But the day before we were supposed to go, he canceled that trip again. Carrie Howley's article goes on to imply all sorts of baseless things. They mentioned a moment from a podcast that Huberman was on where he talked about like, oh, a guy that's dating multiple women, he would probably need to have multiple phones to pull that off. Checkmate, Huberman. You're dating more than one girl? We're taking you to goddamn jail. Well, not jail but we'll cancel your podcast that's strictly about dating monogamously. Your podcast isn't about that. It's just about like science completely unrelated to your own personal life. And that it's kind of just like all about all these daily protocols you can follow that have the potential to give you a bottomless tank. So bottomless that you actually have the energy to juggle and manage six different relationships with women over multiple year long periods. Like the article claims, let's fucking go, dude. In the article, Carrie keeps on trying to make personal accusations that I'm not going to repeat because they're baseless, they're unconfirmed, and 
it affects zero of what you should think about him and his body of work. This is character assassination done with the amount of laziness that I did my fourth grade president's report on Harry S. Truman. In the middle there, I'm like, yeah, he dropped two bombs on Japan. And then, you know, three paragraphs before and three paragraphs after that is just fluff, right? It's just like, gotta fill pages, gotta fill pages. I know the vibe, Carrie. <laughs> And then he said his dog didn't like the blanket like that. Come on, that's so fucking stupid. Why is that in the article? Sarah was not the only person to experience this kind of anger. This hit piece on Huberman is honestly embarrassing to read. Not too embarrassing for Carrie Howley, though. Now, here's my favorite part about this whole attempted cancellation, which is how Dr. Huberman responded. He didn't. He continued about his business like nothing happened because this is a dumb article. This is stupid. It's lazy. Here's a quick supercut of what his podcasts have been like since the release of this article. I'm Andrew Huberman, and I'm a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine. Today, we are discussing peptides. Today's episode marks the first in our six episode series all about sleep. My guest today is Ossie Wind. Ossie Wind is one of the top magicians and mentalists in the world. My guest today is Coleman Ruiz. Coleman Ruiz is a former tier one Navy SEAL special operator. There are these comments that are like, Dr. Huberman, I can't complete my baking soda volcano diorama without knowing why you come the way that you do. Mm. Who cares? You deserve no apology. Grow up. You're helping people tap into their biology to help them become more efficient human beings. Quick question, what makes you come? And it better not be something that doesn't make me come. <laughs> Why are these people so mad? Man, good work, New York Magazine. What a fun episode you've allowed us to create on this. You are terrible people. <sighs> and with that being said, I'd like to say thank you for catching this episode of Catching You Up With. No, no, it's go bits. And more importantly, I'd like to thank all the people that you're seeing on screen right now. They are all producers of this episode. And without their help and support, I wouldn't be able to put out these episodes as consistently and as well as I put them out week after week, every Friday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And if you'd like to become a producer of the show, you can go ahead and click the Patreon link in the description below. And now I'm going to do something that maybe New York Magazine should have done, but I would like to remind you that everything that you just heard in this episode and everything that I reported on that article is... This is a totally... <laughs> unconfirmed news.